In today's video, I will be teaching you how to play Isabel. Although Isabel is designed to play keep away from her opponents, she is also equipped with a surprisingly good close quarters combat moveset that makes her fairly versatile and fun to play. This video will be organized into four parts. A moveset breakdown explaining all of her moves as separate tools, a combo breakdown explaining her moves used in conjunction with each other, and a ledge trapping breakdown explaining how to set up ledge traps and what they cover. And finally, a mindset breakdown explaining how to optimize your game plan in every match to succeed. You can follow the timestamps in the video to skip to a specific part. However, if you are new to playing Isabel, I highly suggest you watch the entire video naturally. This way, all of the fundamental knowledge about the character can be established. Let's start with her grounded attacks. Jab has a plethora of applications, including being a combo tool, lock tool, shield pressure, and even an infinite starter. I won't get in depth on the infinite as I have another video displaying how that works, and there will be a link in the description for it. The first thing about Jab you should know is as your opponent's percents rises, they will be stuck and stunned from it for a longer duration of time. From 0 to 35%, you can move 4 frames faster than your opponent. From 35% and on, you can combo into up tilt. To do this, you must reverse the up tilt so you hit with the earliest part of it. From 65% and on, you can do what is known as the pocket trap. This is where you can combo a pocketed projectile from Jab. From 95% and on, you can combo into down smash and forward tilt. I didn't get into the nuances of Jab because I honestly learned a lot of it from Lath's video covering everything about the attack. It wouldn't be fair for me to just import all of his information into this video verbatim. If you want to know even more info about Jab, please go watch his video, it will also be in the description. Forward tilt is a disjointed attack. It serves as an earlier kill option than down tilt and a faster, longer range option than forward smash. It also serves as a good spacing tool. Up tilt isn't as long range as the rest of her tilts, but still can be used as an anti-air, as well as a combo starter. Up tilt starts behind Isabel. It's a better combo tool when you hit the ending hitbox of it, so the animation is already done while your opponent is still at hit stun. It can link it to itself as well as up air. Down tilt is a huge disjointed grounded attack. It has a lot of vertical knockback and even is a reliable kill option at a higher percent. Down tilt has a lot of shield pushback, making it fairly hard for some characters to punish it out of shield. This serves as a great spacing option for Isabel to control the ground. Dash attack is a very versatile move. In some instances, it serves as an excellent zone breaking attack. It's quick, disjointed, and has mild combo starting potential. If you dash attack at a ledge, the pot will continue to fall in the direction it was thrown. This is great for offstage play or even a great start to a match on a triplat stage. Forward smash is Isabel's strongest smash attack. This move kills surprisingly early but does not have a lot of range. Use this closer to the ledge to score some very early kills. Up smash is Isabel's second fastest out of shield option and is one of Isabel's most useful grounded attacks. A little known fact about it is at low percents it is an excellent combo tool. While Neutral Air is her fastest out of shield option, Up Smash is only 3 frames slower than Nair. If a move is negative 11 or less safe, Up Smash is a more viable out of shield option than Nair because of its combo potential, knockback, and safety. Up Smash doesn't cover behind Isabel's shield, so it cannot be used when crossed up or attacked from behind. This attack also has a bunch of weird properties to it. It actually has two hitboxes. The first, an earliest hitbox comes very low to the ground, and I think was designed to knock the opponent into the stop sign itself, but in some situations, it doesn't always do that. Isabel experiences no hit lag when using this attack, so comboing out of it will always feel very consistent. It's also her safest smash attack on shield. I discussed a lot of shield safety when talking about this attack. If you're confused on shield safety, I'll have a link in the description explaining it in depth. At low to mid percent, up smash is the optimal punish after a jab lock, as it can combo into up air or even a pocketed attack. This makes it the most damaging punish. Down smash is Isabelle's fastest smash attack and sends the enemy at a very horizontal angle, which can be helpful for setting up offstage play. The two hitboxes aren't big, and it's worth noting that the front hit is stronger than the back. 
Neutral Air is Isabelle's absolute fastest outer shield option. It starts up fast and is incredibly active and pretty big too. Neutral Air serves as a combo ender, combo starter, combo breaker, edge guard tool, and even a ledge trap material. Neutral Air can be used twice in a single short hop. It excels when used off stage because of its lingering hitbox, high knockback, and low cooldown due to its early first actionable frame. Forward Air is one of her most important moves in neutral. Forward Air is incredibly long range but loses power and knockback the further away from your opponent you are. This serves as an excellent spacing tool. Short hop fast fall forward air creates a wall of slingshot pellets for your opponent to deal with. Some characters can have their entire approach game invalidated by that alone. To do the most optimally spaced short hop forward air, hold down and short hop. Feel free to use the short hop macro to guarantee a short hop. At the peak of the short hop, use a C stick to input a forward air. This will input the forward air and the fast fall simultaneously. This will ensure the pellet will fly at the lowest trajectory and you will end the animation as fast as possible. Back air is essentially the same attack, but the animation ends 4 frames faster than forward air, making it a more rapid fire attack than forward air, which allows for a neutral air to be done frame perfect after a short hop back air. Pretty much all of the attributes mentioned with forward air apply to back air, so don't worry too much about which you should use and when. There's very rare circumstances where you will need to use one more than the other. Up air is Isabelle's most active aerial. It is a decent juggling tool, as well as a kill option at higher percent. It serves as a combo ender and even a combo starter if done while falling to the ground. However, you must hit with the first two frames of the attack to get the strongest hit, that is the most knockback and damage. Anything later and you will get the weaker portion of the attack. This is vital when finishing a combo with up air. If you want to knock them as far for stage positioning or even take the stock, it's important to hit the strongest portion of the attack. Down air is Isabelle's spike and is very similar to her up air, as well as only spikes during the first two frames of the attack. Anything later and you will get the weak hit. The weak hit sends your opponent horizontally. The spike is also in the middle of the turnips. If you hit on either sides of the attack, the enemy will get knocked in the direction of the side you hit them horizontally instead of straight down, like you intend to. So make sure you space and time this move correctly. Let's get into Isabelle's special attacks. Pocket is one of Isabelle's most important specials. This move in conjunction with the rest of her kit is incredibly lethal. Pocket has absolute intangibility from frame 5 to 23 and collects projectiles from frame 8 to 23. This is to assure you will pocket any projectile without accidentally getting hit by it. You can hold items in your pocket indefinitely. During the time where the projectile is pocketed, some characters cannot produce the projectile again. This can be integral to certain matchups as you entirely disable an attack of theirs while also having it at your disposal. For some characters such as Wario, you essentially ruin the horizontality of his recovery by pocketing his bike. Another good example is pocketing Diddy Kong's banana. This stops him from using one of his main tools in neutral. This doesn't impact all characters the same way. Some characters can use their projectiles even if it's in your pocket. Pocket releases all projectiles on frame 9. The properties of the projectile remain fairly true to the original owner. For example, if you pocket Snake's up smash, it will travel upwards from your hand as though Snake was the one who launched it in the first place. If the item is holdable, you will remove it from your pocket and hold it. You can press B again to place it back in your pocket. This is often useful in situations where merely pocketing an item isn't enough to disable your opponent from using it. Sometimes holding the item outside a pocket will disable your opponent from being able to use it. This move can be B-reversed and wave-bounced, with or without an item being in your pocket. You can use this momentum shift to either get out of disadvantage state or even to surprise your opponent. Fishing Rod is not only one of Isabelle's best combo tools, you can also use Fishing Rod Down Throw to drag your opponents near Lloyd Rocket in an attempt to activate and combo into it. It also serves as a kill option at high percents, an edge guarding tool,
and even a recovery option. Fishing Rod can be casted in two ways. Standard range is done by simply inputting side B. Long range is done by doing a smash attack input with side B. Once grabbed by the rod, you cannot pummel, but you can input different direction throws like a normal grab. If you input no direction, it will forward throw the enemy by default. All of the throws have different utility. Fishing Rod Down Throw is the best combo option. It can combo into a lot of Isabelle's kit, from her aerials to her pocketed items. Fishing Rod Up Throw can combo into up air at low percents. This may be a good option to go for when your opponent is above a platform, as you can try to extend the juggle using the platforms. Fishing Rod Up Throw is also an incredibly potent kill throw. Fishing Rod Forward Throw can kill opponents deceptively early, considering it isn't the main kill throw from Fishing Rod, but it gets the job done nonetheless. It can also set up edge guarding situations or help you get stage control by throwing the enemy in a disadvantaged position stage wise. Fishing Rod Back Throw essentially does the same thing Fishing Rod Forward Throw does, except doesn't kill anywhere near as early. These Fishing Rod Throws can be used off stage. If Fishing Rod Down Throw is used off stage, they will simply slam into an invisible floor. All of the properties for using Fishing Rod Down Throw remain the same as if you were on stage. Using Fishing Rod Offstage can set up for stage spikes or even kill opponents who have overextended offstage really early. Only the hook of Fishing Rod has an active hitbox, and only has a hitbox when the move is being casted or reeled in. The move will not have a hitbox when laying or hanging dormant. However, Isabel can reel it in by pressing B, and the hitbox will be active again. You can use Fishing Rod to tether to the ledge of the stage by aiming the hook in the direction of the ledge. You can even do this from above the ledge. There is a sweet spot you can do in mid-air where the rod will cast over the ledge, but you will continue to drop next to the stage. This is useful to catch your opponent off guard, and even land some early stage spikes and gimps. Fishing Rod also is an integral part of ledge trapping. I will go over this in a later part of the video as it requires its own section. Fishing Rod unfortunately does have some drawbacks to it. First off, the cast and retraction can be shielded. There is enough lag on the retraction that makes it punishable if you don't use the long range toss at max range. However, creating that much space between you and your opponent makes it more susceptible to being reacted to and shielded. All Fishing Rod throw directions scale equally. Fishing Rod also is incredibly buggy, and I hope to see this move fixed in the future. The move doesn't hang properly at the ledge on certain legal stages for seemingly no reason. This can be circumvented by casting closer to the ledge. However, this dulls its effectiveness, as you will have more time for it to be reeled in. There's also a huge blind spot in front of Isabel when using this attack, where the hook will not grab anyone. There's also a really specific spot above the ledge where if you fishing rod, you will teleport onto the stage with an absurd amount of ending lag. With all of this, it's still an amazing attack. Simply fixing the glitches and the blind spot on it would make it on the cusp of overpowered. Balloon Trip is Isabelle's main recovery tool. It has no active hitbox, but does have an additional hurtbox that can sometimes eat attacks for you. This can either work out in your favor by protecting you from a projectile, or it can also backfire and extend the length of an opponent's active hitbox, causing you to get hit in a situation where you otherwise may not have provided the balloons did not have a hurtbox. You float higher and faster with two balloons. You can still make it back with one, but it is significantly harder. To maximize the verticality of the recovery, hold special to flow as high and as fast as possible. If you stop pressing special, you will begin to descend and won't be able to ascend again. Lloyd Rocket is what I like to call Isabelle's neutral machine. You can plant a rocket in the ground and release it in the sky by pressing down B again. Otherwise, the rocket will wait until someone steps on it to begin to fly. Hitting a rocket with an attack that does more than 8 damage will unfortunately destroy it. The destruction of the rocket can also hit Isabel, so be careful standing too close to it. The rocket will go away after 10 seconds of inactivity with no active hitbox. The move can be used in so many different ways, but the most common way it is used is simply to control a specific area of the stage on both the ground and the air. Placing Lloyd mid-stage when you have your opponent closer to the ledge is an excellent way to control the ground. It creates a hazard between them and the center of the stage that they must worry about for at least 10 seconds. You can push enemies into the planted rocket as a mind game, especially when they're holding shield. They may release early not realizing what you're doing.
You can activate the rocket after knocking your opponent in the direction it's planted. Lloyd Rocket is essential for ledge trapping. There are a myriad of spots to place Lloyd Rocket down to set up a ledge trap. Lloyd Rocket works in tandem with Fishing Rod to create ledge traps that can seemingly cover all options or even cannot be punished. As I said earlier, ledge trapping is something I will need to go into in a different section of the video. There's an Isabel specific guide known as Glyroid that is important for you to know. However, there's a video that covers it quite well already, and a link to that will be in the description. Back throw is Isabel's kill throw. The closer to the ledge you are, the earlier it will kill. Down throw is Isabel's combo throw. It can combo into fair, nair, and even pocketed projectiles at 1%. Forward throw and up throw aren't very useful. At most they can serve as a means to look for positional advantage. Now that you know what all of Isabel's moves do separately, let's get into which have synergy with each other and why. The best way to explain this is her bread and butter combos. These are going to be the essential combos you aim to use every single game on most if not all of the entire cast. These aren't all of Isabel's combos, but these are the ones you should focus on achieving the most in-game to optimize damage output and even take the stock. Let's get into one of Isabel's most important strategies, her ledge trapping game. Ledge trapping with Isabel consists of using different combinations of positioning Lloyd Rocket, Fishing Rod, and in some cases, Isabel holding shield. The goal is to cover as many ledge options as possible. With good reaction time and understanding of your opponent's options, you can keep your opponent off the stage. Here are some of the ledge trapping strategies that I find to be the easiest and most rewarding, but keep in mind there are more. The two essential spots to place Lloyd Rocket are as follows. The ledge of the stage, and the spot right where your opponent will roll on the stage from ledge. From this point forward, I'll refer to the first position as ledge position, and the latter position as roll position. This is in my opinion Isabel's safest, easiest, but least effective strategy. The planted rocket covers if the opponent rolls from ledge automatically. Their only option at this point is to neutral get up, get up attack, and jump. Get up attack is the worst option of the three available, as the Isabel player will have enough time to react and punish. Jump is the second worst option, as Isabel can now take advantage of the opponent being above them and use her air to air or anti air attacks. Neutral get up is the safest response to this scenario, but it can still be punished. This scenario is good to set up the jab infinite or just apply some good shield pressure that may make your opponent panic roll into the Lloyd Rocket anyway. 
This essentially covers most of the same thing Scenario 1 does, but instead of punishing your opponent on reaction by moving towards them, you reel in the fishing rod to punish whichever option they take. The scenario makes jump a stronger option, as reeling in fishing rod to punish jump from ledge is not easy and probably needs to be done preemptively. This scenario works better on triplats, as you can cast a fishing rod while standing on the platform. This makes the trajectory of the reel in better suited to cover jump. This scenario is good to try to grab the enemy with fishing rod to up throw them to kill, or forward throw them to continue the ledge trap, or even down throw them for combos. If they roll, Lloyd Rocket will carry them. Retract fishing rod, jump, and combo out of the rocket. This automatically covers roll. On reaction, you can punish all other options with neutral layer out of shield. Get up attack is the worst option to take. It's the easiest to punish on reaction. Jump is the second worst option. It can also be punished by the same short hop neutral air. Neutral getup is the safest option, as it minimizes the amount of time Isabel has to punish with neutral air. This scenario is really good when your opponent is at high percent because neutral air can take a stop, as well as if they stall on the ledge, they have less invincibility time. With this in mind, punish the ledge stall with down tilt. This covers ledge getup automatically. Their only options at this point is to get up attack to destroy it, jump, or roll. Roll is the worst option, as it is the easiest to punish on reaction in this scenario. Get up attack is the second worst option. Not only do some get up attacks not break Lloyd Rocket before it detonates, but the enemy will also experience more hit lag, allowing you to punish on reaction. Jump has the same drawbacks as scenario 1. Simply punish the enemy for being above you. This scenario is best to figure out what option your opponent is more inclined to use. It's good to gather data like this to use it in future situations. These are not all of the ledge trapping options, and also not all of the escape options. Some of these scenarios do not accommodate for double jump from ledge, or even character specific strategies. This is the basic format of ledge trapping to be mindful of. Here is the final part of this tutorial. Now that you know what Isabelle's moves do, and what bread and butter combos you should be looking for, what is your game plan? How will you find the correct moments to use these combos? As I said in the beginning, Isabelle is mainly a zoning character, so your main game plan will be to keep your enemy away from you where you can slowly but surely tack on damage. If they do get in, you must use Isabelle's combo starting attacks to make them regret even getting into your zone. Finishing Isabelle's combo with an attack that sends them out of her zone or even off stage is essential to frustrate your opponent and make them feel like all their attempts to get in are futile. When your opponent is off stage, harass their recovery with your aerial attacks. Time them so the earliest hit of them do the most knockback, but aim them so the late hit covers any chance of mistiming. If you don't take the stock, use the time to set up ledge traps to either take the stock anyway or rack up more damage. When they're finally at high enough percent, be prepared to use her two fast out of shield options to take a stock by punishing your opponent for hitting your shield with something unsafe. Otherwise, look to land her kill confirms to take the stock. If you can't get them off stage, land your kill confirms, nor punish a poor option on shield, fishing rod up throw and net back throw at the ledge are your go-to options to solidify the stock. A lot of these strategies can be used out of the order I've described them in, but this is the way my gameplay flows the best personally. I'm sorry if I sound different in this part of the video. Towards the end of the production, I became very sick and probably sound terrible right now, but I just want to say thank you all so much for watching. I have more content in store for you guys. Specifically, I will be making a showcase for all of Isabel's pocket combos, as well as a montage for her too. If you're interested in that and more, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. I recently hit 2,000 subscribers and I can't thank you guys enough for supporting me over all these years. Have a good one everyone, and good luck with learning how to play the world's most precious shih tzu.